Welcome to another video. Today we're going to cover what a trust line is and what issued currencies are again. So uh, the first part we need to understand is that on the XRP ledger there are so-called issued currencies. They're the equivalent of US20 tokens on the Ethereum network or also the BEP20 tokens on the Binance Smart Chain. Meaning that somebody, uh, an entity whatever, can issue or create their own issued currency and other people can add a trust line to use it. So let's go over what is a trust line. Like I said, why is it even called that? And a trust line is nothing else than it adds the ability to your account to be able to send and receive uh, the certain issued currency. So I'm just gonna quickly do it in a test it now. And on a test net, I'm just gonna generate credentials here. And we can see here on the testnet that, that this is my account. We've got 1,000 XRP here. And as we know, the base reserve, if you have your own account on XRP Ledger, is 20 XRP. So I've got only 980 XRP available to send. So if you go back to account again, and if I want, for example, to my account to be able to receive and send something else, I can add assets. And the asset adding is called setting a trust line. It is a transaction on your account. So you send do it is a transaction, you're sending to XRP Ledger and it changes the state of your account. And it says, for example, I want, for example, Euro. Uh, and so we can define the asset and also can define how much is the maximum I want to own or be able to own here. And so did you just give your own limit? You can say you only want it to be able to have 10 or whatever. Um, right, and if you do that, you can go to next and it's a tr trust set uh, transaction type. So it's a transaction of type trust set and it just sets the uh, the trust line. This, this one is the issue here for uh, euros, for example. And you can also, so usually there are some that are easily reported in here, but if, for example, if the, uh, if the asset is not preset here, you can also go to custom edit and add any asset you'd like to. So right now I'm on the some community website and under the XOPL tokens, here you can look also other assets up. You can see, for example, there are Bitcoin, there are US dollars, there's ETH uh, and so on. And if you want to set a trust line, you just copy the issuer account. Then afterwards, so I'm just missing it, yeah, enter the issue account, then you add the currency tag, so in this case it would be ETH, and then the limit. And then you can also set a trust line again. So it's always the same procedure. Um, right, and why is it called a trust line? So isn't that strange? Is there, do they have access to your account? And the answer to that is no. It's called a trust line because usually in the XRP ledger, you're dealing with obligations. Meaning that, for example, if I have 10 euro, so the balance of 10 euro, there's one central issuing party and I'm trusting that the other party is going to make good on the promise that they're all going to give me 10 euro. So I'm, that's, I'm trusting them. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that they will make good on the promise. So usually, if, for example, GitHub is giving out their own digital euro, so it's, it's like I said, a tokenized version of euro or US dollars, then you want them to also make good on the promise if you say, well, I want to redeem it, I want back my, back my euro, and then you're hoping and trusting that they will also make good on the promise, like I said. That's why I called that. Why they're called that. If, for example, if um, if it's not a tokenized version of anything and not packed to anything, you don't have to trust them. So, more or less, you still set a trust line, but more or less, you're, it's not tied to anything, so you're not expecting to receive anything but the token itself. So, that's, but these are just the backgrounds where it's called then. Uh, the currency itself is always, uh, the currency has two formats. It can be either three letters or it can be the hex value. For example, if there are tokens out there which have longer things, other currency codes longer than three, for example, like Nirian, then you can just add Nirian in here because then you need the, it won't work, you need the hex code. So um, I would just would have to look up if we go to XRP scan. I'm probably able to retrieve it here if I go to uh, trust lines, then we should also be able to see here uh, the the, cur the uh, hex code in order to do that. So that's sometimes a problem if we just click on that one here, I guess. And yeah, I know my bad. And um, there is okay. We'll have to go back one more time. Okay, now okay. I've got I'm now narrowing. I'm gonna pause probably quickly. Um, there should be also. All right, I will go and I uh, will make an update on that, but let's go on. So like I said, there's a hex code you can use instead, instead of the Narin. So either it has to be three, three, word, uh, three characters or you have to enter the hex code here. But let's go on. So now to the issuing part. So like I said, there's usually one central party which is issuing the tokens. Uh, and like I said, similar to the ESO20 tokens. 
Uh, one thing I will highlight here is, you can see here that my reserve is right now 30 XRP. It, it was before 20. For each trust then you add, the minimum reserve gets heightened by 5. So the owner reserve, so setting a trust line, is heightens the, uh, the reserve by 5. If we, for example, would remove, remove one now, I've got the euro here, for example, and we'll say remove it, then you can see after the transaction goes through that I've got now only a reserve of 25 again. So as soon as you remove the trust line, it gets lowered again. Um, so generally, now let's go a little bit into the issuing. So like I said, usually it's the centralized party which is issuing the tokens. And for that example, we're going to use CC. Casino coin. We can see here. Casino coin. We can see here how many casino coin ha casino coins have been issued. Um, and if you also copy now the address, and oh, we'll just click on XOP scan. We can see here the issuing account. And one very important thing is here. Here's all, uh, XOP scan just added that the black hole account marker. So it means that this account is not able, as you can see here, to do any transactions or sign new uh, new XOP. Ah, my bad. Or sign new, uh, or create new casino coins. So it means that all the casino coins are in existence and are going around. And this account isn't able to print more, more or less. And yeah, they're doing that by. So you can also see it here when it disable the master key and set the uh, regular key. So it should be here as well. If to set the regular key to something else, but okay, no, it seems to. So, like I said, if the mask is disabled, this account can't sign and didn't set anything else. So like I said, this is here a black hole account. Uh, it's probably in the settings in there, I think. It's right, yeah, and you can see here the regular key. The regular key is set to account one, which is also not possible to use. So, I'm just gonna look it up for you. So, if I enter that one here, that's account one. Uh, it's also a black hole account, so nobody can use it or sign with it. So, like, um, right. So, is there anything else to mention? Uh, also, if it's a black hole account, it means also the trust line cannot be frozen. Because if, if this account is, is able to sign, uh, then it can also freeze individual transactions. So, that's also interesting to know. So, XRP can never be frozen. I'm going to highlight that again. X, you cannot freeze XRP. That's not possible. Nobody's issuing XRP. But issued currencies, like, for example, Casino Coin, it would be theoretically possible if that account would be still active to do an individual freeze or also global freeze on casino coin but this is not possible anymore since this uh, since the issuing account of um, of casino coin is a black hole account meaning that this account cannot do anything so it's completely moving freely and nobody can do block it or stop it uh, with casino coin as well nobody can freeze individually so you might wonder why they added the feature for example for example with issuing euros big atop they want to issue new tokens because they, it's packed to euro, so they want to be able to issue new tokens, and maybe they also want to be able to um, freeze accounts if they see whatever fraudulent activity. So uh, we can also, by the way, which is very important to note, that it's also possible to give up the ability to freeze and still be able to issue new tokens. We can look it quickly up though, if uh, regarding if the euros, if they did that, if you look into the settings. Uh, and they, they are, did not. So they are, are able to also freeze individual Euro uh, trust lines. So that's, that's something I might add here. But um, right, but like I said, it's packed to Euro, so therefore they want to issue new ones. All right, so that's it for this video. I hope you've learned a little bit more about trust lines. So like I said, after you don't need trust line again, you can remove it. But what's important there to note that if you have a balance on the trust line that you have to send the amount you have on a trust line away. So either you send it back to the issuer or to another account so it's empty and then you can remove the trust line. And after you did that, so I think there's no liquidity there, yep. So after you did that, it's possible again to remove the trust line and you the account balance get lower, gets lowered by 5 XOP again. And then you can use it again. Alright, so that's it for this video. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one.